Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. And today is day eight of the daily advent devotionals and day eight of Vlogmas. I'm so excited about this video. This is actually my reading journal setup. So there are timestamps down below if you want to check all those things out. But first, as always in these videos, you're going to see the advent devotional first because Jesus is the reason for the season. So we talk about him first. And then we're going to go into the hubs and I opening up our little advent calendars, all that stuff. And then you'll see my reading journal setup. So I've actually kind of caught up um, filming right now things at the same time <laughs> instead of pre-filmed content for some of these things so it's kind of real time finally syncing up and everything so yeah I hope you enjoy this video but today we're going to start off with day eight of our devotional and that is the prophecies of the coming messiah y'all so for today's devotional again we are still reading out of star of wonder by angela hunt i hope you've been enjoying this every day i know i have let me just say it's been such a blessing and so we're gonna go ahead and dive right in and some of this i might read part bits and pieces uh, from of whatever stands out to me and all that stuff but yeah we're gonna go ahead and dive in so uh, before i get started the whole first seven days has been about the places of Christmas. And so now, I don't know how many days it is, but we're going to get into the prophecies of Christmas. And I love learning about prophecies. So let's go. At the time of Jesus' birth, the Jews longing for the Messiah's arrival had never been stronger. Since 63 BC, Judea had been one of Rome's client kingdoms. The Romans installed Herod the Great as king, and he reigned until 4 BC. After Herod's death, his sons ruled different areas of Judea. Rome maintained control. The Romans, who were poly polytheists and quite willing to accommodate the religious beliefs of other cultures, did not know what to make of the monotheistic Jews. They expected the Jews to politely acknowledge the Roman gods and were offended when the Jews refused to do so. The Jews, on the other hand, re resented Rome's military occupation, taxation, and its meddling with the office of high priest. The Romans even retained custody of the high priest's sacred garments, except for when needed for annual rituals. Though the Romans didn't require the Jews to worship Caesar, they did require the people to offer prayers and sacrifices for the emperor. The friction between Romans and Jews did not dissipate as time passed. In fact, the situation grew more tense with each passing year. While the Jews groaned under Roman occupation, their Torah teachers searched the scriptures for hope. Lois, I can't say her last name, but it starts with a T. <laughs> We're just gonna say Lois T. She says the evidence suggests that the Torah was being read as if Israel's prophets were its commanders, elaborating on how each detail of the Torah would find fulfillment in the world to come. These sages weren't blind to the words of the to the words of the prophets. They studied Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22, 1 through 22, and realized the words were messianic. But since they could not make sense of a suffering king, they declared that God would be two messiahs, a conquering king, Messiah, son of David, and a suffering servant, Messiah, son of Joseph. They reasoned that the suffering servant would spring from Joseph, the patriarch, because he had suffered mightily before God, elevated him in Egypt. In the early days of Jesus' ministry, Philip told Nathaniel, we found the one that Moses in the Torah and also the prophets wrote about Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We know Philip was referring to Joseph the patriarch because the prophets did not write about Joseph the carpenter. What the Jews did not expect was one Messiah and two appearances. The first as a helpless baby who arrived through a virgin's womb and came to suffer and die the second and still future as conquering king who would descend through the clouds to reign over his creation. Even Jesus' disciples did not understand clearly his mission until after the resurrection. Y'all, this is so profound to think about all of this. As Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead, people pointed to the miracles as proof of his authority to rule. What a king he would be. When soldiers were wounded in battle, Jesus could heal them even bring them back to life. If they hungered, he would miraculously supply food. If the environment worked against Jewish forces, Jesus could change the weather with a word. 
This is one reason why so many Jews, Jews of Jesus' day did not recognize him. The suffering man on the cross wasn't the Messiah they were expecting or the one they wanted. A moment of wonder. With the blessing of hindsight and the leading of the Holy Spirit, we now realize that the Old Testament is replete with specific prophecy about the child born at Christmas. The Messiah would come as a baby in Isaiah 9, 5. The Messiah would be humble in Zechariah 9, 9. The Messiah would be a servant, suffering servant in Isaiah 52, 13 through 15. The Messiah, an immortal being, would be born in Bethlehem, Micah 5, 1. The Messiah would be our salvation, Isaiah 53, 11 through 12. Father, help us look in scripture and see what is, not simply what we want to see. Open our minds and hearts to your truths and teach us your word. We, we trust your word just as we trust you, our salvation, our Lord, and our God. Amen. I absolutely loved that introduction to prophecies here. And actually, in the back, I didn't read them. But you could see, if you want to pause. Sorry, my nails are bad, y'all. But <laughs> we'll hide them. But you can see here in, um, just the actual scriptures that they're referencing in this book. So if you want to pause, you can look at it right here. But, uh, yeah, so many great scriptures to reference are in the Old Testament and complete prophecies of his coming and being born in Bethlehem. And just everything about Jesus is the Old Testament. Everything about him is in the Old Testament. You know, so many people don't think about that. And it's very important to remember that the Old Testament points to Jesus. And it's so that's why it's still so important to read it, you know. So, uh, I've read about half of the, actually, I don't know if it's half the, the, I don't know if it's half of the Old Testament. I got up, up to Isaiah. Okay, so I need to read Isaiah. It's really long, and I want to make sure I just take my time with it when I get there. But, so profound, everything that's in there. You know, all those referencing scriptures. And, it just reminds me that we really need to just look to his word, open our minds, see what we need to see, and, you know, just like those that didn't really realize uh, that, you know, when the Messiah came during their time, they didn't realize that that was who he was. It wasn't who they were expecting. It makes me really want to make sure that I dive into more end times uh, prophecies and just just books about that and to just be immersed and know more about the end because we are living in the last days whether we know it or not and it may it's the last of the last days from what our pastor says and you know there's so much I don't want to be not aware of right I want to know more and that just reminds me that's like what speaks to me in this of, of just like getting into his word and trusting it and just open our minds and our hearts to your truth lord very important to me. So I hope this blessed you today. And tomorrow we're going to learn all about prophecies and patterns. So thank you for watching today. And we're going to go to the next part of this video. Hey y'all, number eight. We're up to day number eight. Let me tell you, this one looks hefty. This has got to be good compared to yesterday with Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got to be a banger, I'm telling you. You didn't see yesterday. Uh, that was a buzz. If you didn't see yesterday, you didn't miss much. I got a cool little bird card, but other than that, you know, <laughs> that, that'll work. This is the, um, <laughs> their, their sweaters um, that they wear. This so. one, like, I know you can't feel them on camera. Man, I wonder what like, this is. What you... feels like, it feels like tape. Put your hand right there and feel it. It's like a little not washi it's... tape. It's coloring. Oh my gosh, what is that? Coloring? It's like a coloring book. Okay, wow, they actually give you... Color pencils. Okay, they give you color pencils. Now, That's... you know you girls got color pencils. What if I had time to color? I haven't. Oh wow, they give you like four different ones. All right. There's something you cut, let me see. <gasps> Dude. This oh. is... Oh my gosh, it's that... No. I want to color these. Look, it's the forest, the house. The house symbols with the colors. <laughs> Okay. okay, all right, all right. Uh, that was cool, that was cool, that was cool. Ravenclaw, okay, <laughs> Gryffindor. So what house are you, are you in? Uh, in my game, I'm Ravenclaw. Have but you ever I, taken the test? Uh, to yeah, see? it said I was a Gryffindor, but yeah. I did take the test, it always I took the Gryffindor. test and it said I was Ravenclaw. Oh, it did? Yeah. No, it said I was usually Gryffindor. So, um, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff. Y'all, I will be putting clip in of this. This is super cool. So yeah, we might be we need to like yeah. just color it really quick. 
I won't be coloring it, but I will. But I mean, I have some better pencils. I than can those. color, but yeah. Um, love but this. But honestly, oh, this you know what? Fun. These actually say Harry Potter on them. That's actually a cute little touch. It actually. Oh. It says Harry Potter on them. Okay. So this is so kind of a neat I like little, the eight. Uh, That's pretty slick. So if you want a nice little keepsake, then I like yeah, it. Yeah, that was cool. So that was All right. Neat. I like that. Let's see what these look like. Isn't that cute? That was cool. All right. All right. Now he's got his Pokemon so box. So this what... looks like a smaller slit. Like it might not be a thing of cards. It could be something well, different. Well, I hope it ain't. It might be a single <laughs> card. Got Let, enough let's hope this is a special holiday card because those are cool. Um, I just feel like we got a lot of cards. Yeah. Or at least we something fancy. Well, honestly, I like how this has honestly when you have Pokemon or any type of card, you're going to end up with a lot of like just regular card, you know? In yeah. General. Oh my gosh, I'm stuck. Uh, hold on. Uh oh. Got it out. What'd you we get? We finally got it out. So let's Took see what it is. <laughs> so it is a. Whoa. Oh, a that's glass, a snowflake a on glass it. Glass Streer. It's like a horse. Glass Streer. So it's like a holiday Christmas like horse. It's got snowflakes. So these these are cool because these are the holiday. I set like that. Reprint cards. So. Yeah. These are always good to get. Yeah, this one looks like it's not bent. So. What did I just say? It definitely better. So. Cool. All right. That's it. What's, what was that for? That was one? eight. <laughs> now we're up to number nine. All right. We'll see y'all. I can't keep straight. We will see y'all tomorrow for day nine. Yeah. All right, y'all. So we are going to do as quick as possible a flip through of my current reading journal. I've kept up with it the best I can. I'm not very good at consistency with this, but every so often I will go in, print off some things and, you know, tape them in, fill out a few things, use some pages for brainstorming, all that good stuff. And really, this is just a notebook. It, I don't know what's happening. There's like some dye that's like been trying to like get through here. Something has tried to bleed through on the front, but we here. I got this notebook off, I think, Dayspring, their website, or, yeah, maybe, I think it was. <laughs> I was going to say um, Books of Man, but I'm pretty sure this was Dayspring. So, <clears throat> with that said, I am going to just do a flip through the best I can. I didn't know a good setup to really do this, and I don't love the way my hands look, so please ignore anything that don't look that great, but we here. I'm going to try to show you guys the best way I can this flip through that's more of like a straight on of how it's set up. I didn't start off with this this first of the year. I actually started off with like a actual binder with some of these things printed out and that was hard for me to keep up with. So I actually just ended up using the printouts and taping them in. You'll kind of see that throughout the process. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let me see how this looks on the page if I just open it up. And um, this is a day spring journal, it says. Hey, that looks pretty good. All right, y'all. Hey, look at us. We're doing this thing. Okay. So, first things first, you're going to see here, and if you need to zoom in or anything, I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see to the best of your ability what's in here, okay? So sorry for any kind of moving around, all of that stuff, but that's a little bit better. So, in this, you'll see I had my 1,000 YouTube subscribers, I uh, had put that graphic up, I hit 1,000 like last Christmas actually, on Christmas Day, I want to say, and look at us now, we almost hit 2,000, who knew? Thank you all so much for all of your support. I love you guys so, so much. And this is really the year that I started doing Canva graphics. And I absolutely love them. You've seen so many that I've done on Instagram and all the things. And so you will see a lot of Canva graphics within this binder and everything. But last year I had my 2022 reading wrap up. That's, you know, how many books I read last year, the most read author, all of that stuff. So I will definitely try to do that again for this year. So, next page, we have our faith goals and reading goals. I'm going to do a separate video just showing kind of like where I ended with these things. You can see some things I've checked off, some things I haven't so far, right? I think I will actually get the 10 nonfiction done. Definitely not the classics, but we're going to get close, I guess. Maybe close. I don't know. But <laughs> at least somewhere. I think I'll get at least over five. So, they, that, that'll be pretty good. Um, but you see these goals here. Um, the faith goals... Yeah, we're a little bit shaky on that, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. I've been keeping record of just, you know, the books of the Bible I've been reading this year versus trying to read the entire Bible, kind of just sticking to uh, individual books and 
like study Bible studies with those instead and that's been a lot better for me and not as stressful so yeah just taking my time with it the best I can instead of trying to like push myself in a whole year I'm just taking my time with everything so yeah like I said we'll do a separate video on those goals uh, coming up and readathons <laughs> different reading challenges and readathons that I have participated in one was reading read in the new year that was hosted by Holly from Love Day with Holly and Oshina and I just kind of notated where I ended up with that and what books were for each prompt and then the Christian Romance Reading Challenge that Oshina has for 2023. Been working through that throughout the year and just notating the books for each prompt. And so by the end of the month, I need to put in one for November. I already have one I can put in there. I just need to write it in. By the end of the year, I will have this whole challenge completed and I absolutely loved doing this. I cannot wait to see what she has for next year. So we've got that. And then we have the Southern Charm Readathon that uh, I had started this year and you can kind of see this was actually our first draft of the, the bingo bingo board. And um you know I had worked with some of my friends and they gave me some fine tuning with the prompts and then I turned them instead of circles into actual books, book covers and all of that. So that turned out really well and just uh so thankful for the host Chrissy Sky, Amy, Lindsay, and Miriam. So thankful for all the help that they uh, did for that for this year. And I definitely look forward to doing it again next year. Speaking of Miriam, your girl had participated in her Around the World in 80 Days Readathon as well. And I had several uh, books for each country. And that's kind of where I landed with everything in their graphic. And uh, Miriam, Holly, and Anne, they all did this readathon. And it was such a fun one to push myself to actually read the Around the World in 80 Days readathon, read I'm saying, book <laughs> uh, for the, the this year. And it's another classic that I could add to my list that I had read. And I really enjoyed it. So um, as you see on the right here, we have 2023 books to read. So that's my 23 and 2023. Oh, your girl can knock off seven and a half deaths. Okay, I think I have this in two places actually. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at so far. Probably not going to get to all of those, but um, I might have like eight or nine left by the time me and Blake do the video to wrap this up. But hey, I, as much of a mood reader as I have been this year, this is actually pretty good. So I, I'm happy with that. We'll do a whole video wrapping that up with the hubs just for the effect. Um, and then we have got my classics and my nonfiction um, how I've been doing with everything, honey. You can see the classics, bless it. Um, <laughs> I wanted to read all these, and I've already marked Little Women off, because I'm going to finish it for December. Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've definitely not read the ones I wanted to this year, but I just found this year that I'm not necessarily a classics person, but I want to definitely try to read certain ones. I did try Persuasion, and it was just not for me right now. And maybe at some point when I'm a different in a different headspace, I'll be able to do that. So, um, but I did notate that I've had Little Women, North Anger Abbey, Around the World in 80 Days, Roger Ackroyd from Agatha Christie. I'm counting that. <laughs> and then The Two Towers and Return of the King by Tolkien. Those are more like, I guess, more modern classics. But um, yeah, and so I, I feel like that's pretty good for me. So then the nonfiction, I feel like once I'm done with Every Woman a Theologian, Join Christ's Presence, I'm only going to have one more left. And I actually have the audiobook for Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish They where they went to um, New Zealand. I love listening to those audiobooks. So I plan to listen to that and get that done. So I should have at least... 10 for the nonfiction this year. So I'm pretty proud of myself on that. So yeah, let's keep going. And then we have got some challenges here. So this is my 23 and 2023. And this little printout was actually 25. So whatever, I had added two extras. I think Blake actually picked the Rose and the Thistle in that video and we realized we had 24. So I just added a bonus in here. So hey, we, we good. But um, I, I think, I, yeah, see, I covered it. I covered in covered colored in <laughs> seven and a half deaths so um these are kind of the ones i have left i've still gotta just go through it i know some of these are not gonna happen we're gonna move on but i can read them next year at time and, and blake's gonna pick 24 for 2024 as well so i hope we love to see that too um and then i've got just this random a through z um you know book challenge as well i don't know that i'm gonna have anything for z x or Q. <laughs> I might have something for you. I don't know. <laughs> but we're here. I, I, I need to go look and see what everything I've read. So, um, but yeah, I did do that. And these templates actually came from a Etsy, um, like reading journal printout. So, you know, I talked about that in my, uh, bookish gift guide that you could, you could buy, you know, downloads off of Etsy 
and that people have already pre-made and so this is one that um was from there and i just print it out and you can just print it as many times as you need to and whether you're doing any kind of challenge you're here for it you know it's going to work out no matter what challenge you're doing you're going to have those book spots and every year you know i could do this one i'm definitely going to do this one for next year and everything so yeah and this one too all right, and then we have got the 2023 book bingo that also came with that template from Etsy that I talked about, and I just tried to go through it. I think I have some of these I can feel, still fill in, uh, but just haven't really checked back in with this in a little bit. So, um, also, the summer book bingo, you'll see there on the right that Tiffany over at Beautiful Minutia that she had um, hosted this summer, and I just felt like I did a pretty good job. Um, I had several bl blanks, but had a lot of these filled in, so definitely going to be participating in that next year it really kind of pushed me to get a lot of reading done during the summer and just kind of branch out in my reading as well so all right and I did make a list for my most anticipated fall releases and if I was on any launch teams or you know the blogger teams that you know through the publishing company or NetGalley that kind of stuff or if I pre-ordered it etc so I had made that and then on the right you'll see I had the printout from my um graphic that I did on Canva and I marked some of these these two DNFs and then if I've read it or not so I still gotta uh I've actually already, oh I need to mark that off I did read to spark a match and I'm reading the Juliet Code right now uh we're in November as I'm filming this and I still gotta read Rocky Mountain Promise and A Winter by the Sea so yeah just um marking things off as I go along oh and I still gotta read uh All's Fair and Love and Christmas that's coming up soon so yeah I've just been doing these graphics through Canva and since I've already got the templates done it's very easy for me to just fill these in really quick and put the um, pictures in there as I can. So, then we've got the Middle Earth Readathon that Reese over at the Writing Songbird had asked me to help co-host. So, I helped with some graphics and everything. And this is kind of where I ended up and then um, what the actual prompts were for. So, I just printed that out so I could keep record of that. All right. Then we have got some reading trackers. And uh, my friend Sky over at Read for the Sky was doing these every month. And in March, uh, she inspired me to start doing some as well. So, these were hers that she had created. But this just kind of tracked my reading. Reading. and many people have asked me how to put the images on there through Instagram like a lot of times people put these in their stories and I do have several trackers that I have made on my Instagram uh, in a highlight reel called trackers if you're interested but I just want to mention that the easiest way to do this is put the image like this background image just like the raw image I guess I should say in um, Instagram and then you like add another picture on top of it and just size it, you know, you pinch and you size it to where each box is, and then you could do text and type over it what your star rating was, and sometimes I've done it that way, other times I've just imported it into Canva and done my own thing with it, but, you know, either, the easiest way is truly to just put it in um, Instagram and do it that way in the stories as you're editing. If you need help, some people have messaged me about it, I don't mind, I could show you how to do it, like, do it, I could do, like, a recording or something and show you, but, yeah, so this is January's reading tracker, just the books I read, and then, of course, February, was another template from sky and then in march is when i started doing my own and so yeah just a lot of fun i just i just been creating some each month as i go and this is what i read in, in february and then i had the ones in march it's nice to have that visual for me of like everything i've read for the year versus like going to my blog or goodreads i know i have a visual in a way but like to see it all like in a collage way is really nice as well so and like what you rated it overall then, of course, we got April and May, June and July, and then August, and then September. And I started putting DNFs. Like, I normally, a lot of times, I think I forgot to put DNFs on these. So, I've tried to put DNFs down here when I could, when I remembered to. Sometimes I forgot. So, and then October. So, yeah, I'm filming this in the middle of November. And these, I actually did these on Canva. So I went back and just put part one, part two for me personally, because I had the template where I was already creating it. But, um, you know, you don't have to do that. So, um, but then in November, I will put November's here. And wait, do I not have a spice for December? Y'all, I messed up. I, December was supposed to be right here. Look. <laughs> 
Hey, that's okay. Maybe I can, like, put it all on this page. I'll just have to shrink it, you know? Maybe I can put November and then December. We'll probably figure out a way to do it. But, uh, see, that's real life. We mess up sometimes, right? Pages get out, out of whack. But, anyway, so now we're going to go into the uh, recommendation posts. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have been doing a lot of these posts. And I actually use these posts to make some YouTube videos and stuff. So, um, of, like, book recommendations and things. So, this is my Christian Clean Contemporary Book Recs uh, for Romance. And then, uh, which I didn't do a video on all of these. I do have a Christian romance video that has most of these in it already. So that's why uh, I think there's a couple of these that's missing from that that I've read since then. But overall, uh, I made that last year and at, um, what was it, Valentine's Day. So, yeah, I may do an updated one. And so we go into the Christian Clean Historical Romance book regs. And I already had a video for historical fiction or actually yeah historical fiction and historical romance so I think I did a video just on his general historical fiction which I have another graphic for but I had posted this one on these two on Instagram and had a part three as well because I, I love historical romance it's just definitely one of my favorite genres and then here you can see I made a note video complete and so I did a Christian contemporary uh just general general contemporary fiction book recommendation videos i'll link those below if you've not seen that that one that video then i have the mystery suspense book recommendations and then just clean romantics christian slash clean romantic suspense book regs i did do a video on those then i did a video on the fairy tales fantasy book regs historical fiction book regs so i just want to be able to remember the different genres and so i put them in here since i had the graphics done and then uh, biblical fiction book ranks and of course we can add Iscariot to that so I made a note for that I did do a video on biblical fiction before I read Iscariot so yeah and then I started in July doing some monthly favorites book ranks so just like anything that was a four and five star read is on this list basically for the month and I usually have a lot of four and five stars you know I, I generally know what I'm gonna like before I pick it up so I'm like okay I'm probably gonna like this so, I usually have higher rated books, but there are some duds that come in, threes and stuff. You know, it, it, and a three doesn't mean I don't recommend it. It just means that, like, it may not be for me, but other people may enjoy it as well. There are some things I liked and some things I didn't. But I have a lot of four and five star reviews. Yeah, we have the July monthly favorites and the August four and five star reads. And I post these always on Instagram. So that's another way. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's always linked down below. I do a lot of posts on there. Just randomly put this in here about um, the Southern Charm Readathon, like wrapping that up because I realized I forgot. So I wanted to throw that in there as well with like um, Sky made these graphics for me. So I was so thankful for that. So you could do like your individual writing. This was after the readathon came up. So next year we'll definitely have these. This is kind of where I ended up. And I had like a little thank you post for my co-host and everything. So did that. And then I did Katie's Journey Through the Bible Readathon. I just kind of threw that in there as well. Wanted to make sure I had a spot for it. And that was a free page. So that was recently in October. So just mar I marked where uh, the prompts that I had fulfilled. And the, had pictures of the books that went with each. And then September there's my monthly faves as well my four and five star reads and then we have octobers and i actually forgot to post that till recently so there's that <laughs> but um yeah then i've got a space for november and hey i didn't leave out decembers <laughs> we here um i've got a placeholder for my 2023 favorite books will i need more than one page we'll see i do have a, a second page for that then i've got my dnfs slash least favorite this will be for me so i can like prep my filming mind of like just like brainstorming the books that I feel like I need to talk about for the videos. So this is going to be more of a brainstorming thing than anything. Then we are going to go into January 2024 and just a little preview of some of my goals. We'll talk about them later. But, uh, you know, the books I want, what my goals are for the year. And then I've got the 10 book uh, challenge, so nonfiction and classics. And then we've got the 24 and 2024 I don't know what this page will be yet. And then we've got our book bingo again, A to Z reading challenge. And then I've actually, I need to update this because I finished Second Thessalonians, but um, I'm marking off every book of the Bible that I've read at least once in my most recent years of life since coming back to the Lord. And so if I've read it at least in 2023 or before, 
I've marked it. So it would have been probably like 2016, 2017 and, and up. And so that way I can kind of keep track and not be so stressed out. Oh, I've never read it. Well, I have. It's just I need to make sure what have I not yet read in full. I know I've read a lot of the New Testament individually here and there, but I did want to mark it because I really want to like walk through the Gospels and then mark it. So I just didn't mark it. I knew I'd read Luke, but I've read the others like off and on, just not full in full. So um, yeah, definitely going to work, work through that into the new year. And I think that's it, y'all. So, yeah. I hope this was beneficial to some somebody. Uh, I hope you liked seeing this uh, and everything. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, as always. And uh, I know y'all can't really see me. Let me turn this around. All right, y'all. I look crazy. This, I mean, this is why I wasn't in the camera, but we're here. So, yeah. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you keep a reading journal what format you use, all of that good stuff. Y'all, my makeup, look at this. Today's Black Friday when I'm filming this. So <laughs> I've just been run ragged. We went shopping and all that stuff. Um, book haul is incoming, by the way. You already know that, right? Uh, <laughs> who am I? You already know. Like, I mean, Black Friday book hauls we're gonna have. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you of like how you might wanna set up your own reading journal, all that good stuff. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all.